Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. My name is Danny DeLillo. I am delighted to be joined here by the amazing director of the film Parachute. Catherine, love it to have you here. Hi, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, I've got so many questions about your amazing film, but for those that haven't seen it, let's look at a clip of Parachute. <laughs> Wendy, Cat, I don't even know where to begin because uh, it, you took us on a, a, a wondrous journey. Um, but for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Yeah, so Parachute is about a 16-year-old girl, Wendy Zhang, who is Chinese, but she's living in the U.S. on her own. And at the beginning of the film, she finds out that she will be getting a roommate, Mei Ling, who's also from China. Um, and so the film is about their sort of attempt at friendship, which turns sour. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we shot it in the Bay Area in California. It's based on a true story. And uh, yeah. Well, I mean, well, go Bay Area. Uh, love, love that you filmed up there as well. Um, so obviously you, you said it was very interesting when we spoke at the film festival about this and, and where the inspiration from the story came from, if you wouldn't mind sharing where it did, because it's quite an amazing story. Yeah, so um, it's inspired by something that actually happened in 2016, which was um, this incident in which a group of parachute kids or Chinese immigrants that were living by themselves in LA um, basically attacked one of their classmates. Um, and it was a really brutal story and all of them are now serving time in the US. Um, but I found this story and became really intrigued by it because the um, girl who sort of was like the ringleader of the attack and kind of like had established this bullying ring um, wrote this really heartfelt apology letter where she explained how after she came to the US as a like 14 year old girl alone, she became really lost and um, didn't have any support systems um, and just like couldn't find her way basically and ended up struggling really um, emotionally and psychologically not to excuse her actions. Yeah. yeah. But um, I was really surprised at how uh, in tune she was with, with why she behaved in this way. Mm -hmm. So um, I read that and, and I started thinking about like, you know, um, we all like to sort of reduce things down to good people versus bad people and good versus evil. And I think that actually, you know, things are not that black and white and people who act badly often have reasons or motivations for doing so that come from like deep psychological pain or hurt or, you know, things that have happened in their past that they might not even be aware of. Um, so Parachute was an exploration of that that idea um, and in the character of Wendy who came here at 14, she's now 16, um, she's really struggling and she doesn't know how to put that into words. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. I, I thought your, your, you know, your cast, particularly your, you know, your two, two leads were just amazing. There was just so much going on in their minds and I could feel it. And, and obviously it was really interesting to hear their, you know, that see their, their interaction together, but even just, just their, their, their physical presence, like how they were, how they were reacting to each other in the given situation was powerful. So tell us a little bit about how you brought your cast together because I was so impressed. Yeah, I'm also impressed. Um, <laughs> they, they are just really talented actors. And, um, and so, so the lead who plays Wendy, her name's Nikki Zo, And she's actually the sister of our producer, Chris. Oh, uh, Chris is a friend of mine and I brought him on board to produce and uh, we didn't have anyone casted for Wendy at that point. We were looking through casting services, through like backstage, through Facebook, theater, local theaters. And Chris said, you know, my sister acts. Um, and so he sent her the script. She came to the audition totally 
just looking the part of Wendy. She, it was clear that she embodied this character and um, her read was fantastic. She read in Mandarin and in English. Oh, and um, so we just knew that she was meant to be Wendy. And um, Mei Ling is played by Zoe Lau, who is also a professional actress and um, just is Mei Ling. Like the two of them just, they're both professional actors, but they also just happen to be very well suited for these roles. Oh, great. Um, so yeah, we found Zoe, or she found us through a casting call, I think, and um, we had them read together and they were, their chemistry was like so incredible, so yeah. I, you know, I mean, I think well, we, we spoke a little bit about this in the, the film festival, but, you know, I mean, it's it's aside from the obviously the horrific story that, you know, this film was inspired by, you know, it's a really, really difficult transition moving to another country, particularly the United States, which operates so differently from many other countries um, in its culture. Um, and it's almost in a bubble of culture itself in a weird way, um, you know, and so I love that, you know, you kind of show this experience of, a, of, a, of a, a student coming to another country, coming to America, dealing with the change and the differences and the language and everything else. And, you know, I also kind of love the perspective of that, even though you've got two people that came from the same country, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're automatically fitted to being alike. You know, I certainly, when I was a student in, England, in here, you know, it was like, oh, meet this other British person, you'll get along great. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're all we're all going for it. And so I love that that kind of dynamic. Was that something important you kind of wanted to articulate? Because I think it really showed in the film as well, um, you know, about this. Yeah, I love that you bring that up. Um... It's funny because you mentioned that like being, you know, coming to the US yourself and people wanting to put you with other British folks. I, I remember having a conversation with a friend who um, in college and he was like, why is it that all the kids from China hang out together? And like, why can't they like integrate more? Um, and, you know, I was just thinking like, it must be really hard with a language barrier, with the, like being so far from home, like with the total culture shift. And like, you know, it, it, there are a lot of major barriers that that present themselves. Um, I'm not surprised that people, you know, from other cultures tend to stick together. In this case, yeah, they don't get along, I think like, and so it was important to me also to illustrate that like, obviously, not all people from the same background are the same, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think we, in America, we tend to like, we have stereotypes of like, oh, people from this country are like this, or people from that racial background are like that. Yeah. And so I am all for making more movies that make it clear that like, there are just as many differences in people from Asia or China or Latin America or Africa as there are in people from the United States. Like, yeah. And going deeper into what I love that you did with your film, which I was so impressed about upon as well, is that um, you had um, different dialects in there as well. And, and you brought in some amazing professional people to help you on that journey, um, which I thought was amazingly incredible. And then also making a film as well with a language that you don't speak, you know, and, and that whole process, like tell us a bit more about that because I think I think for any I think we're in a world now which I'm so excited about where we're seeing more films in different languages in the mainstream. Um, I've always enjoyed watching films in different countries, but we're seeing it more in the mainstream now. And I love that you took a step forward to say not only different languages that you didn't even know yourself, but different dialects. Just tell us about that journey for you. Yeah, so Mei Ling um, is from Shanghai. And um, in speaking with my friends who are from mainland China, I felt that it was important to sort of create a class difference between the two girls and Shanghai is a much more uh, wealthy area of China. Um, so we wanted her to speak a little bit of Shanghainese with her parents on the phone. Um, and so, and I felt that that also kind of creates a personal barrier that, you know, the two girls are sharing the same room, but when Mei Ling talks with her parents on the phone, sometimes she's speaking another language that Wendy can't understand. Um, so, yeah, to me, I, I think that the nuances of that kind of, of the bringing in those different dialects and, you know, maybe it's something that only our Chinese audiences, Chinese speaking audiences will get, but I still think that's really exciting to put that in the film. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned in our, in our group chat yesterday, I'm Chinese American, but um, 
I was raised speaking English. My mom was raised speaking English. We, my grandma speaks Cantonese. So my grandpa is the only one in my family who speaks Mandarin. I don't speak any Mandarin, but um, it was important to me that the characters speak Mandarin. So um, we just made sure that our team had a lot of Mandarin speaking people um, and our script supervisor, um, our casting director and a number of other people along the way mm -hmm. um, speak Mandarin fluently. And so I would often be consulting with them, like, how does this sound? You know, here's a kind of um, like idiom in English that I might want to put into the script. What would the Chinese equivalent be? And mm -hmm. our script supervisor was just like, oh, you know, he'd jot down some ideas. Like, I think it should, here's a joke that might work. Um, so there are little Easter eggs in there for people. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So, so for any filmmaker out there, that's what you do. You heard it from from Kat, and that's that's how you you know you, you integrate all those different great nuances in your film. And I think it's I think it's it's one it's wonderful. I always love when you can challenge yourself to do to bring in new entities to your work as well. Um, I love this, you know, I mean, again, it was obviously hard to watch this kind of relationship between these two roommates and just the feeling they were both just carrying so much, you know, I actually felt for both of them in different ways. And it was weird. And I felt am I being bad here for feeling something for the kind of, you know, so called kind of bully, but I, I just felt her energy that she was carrying so much. For you as a director, like, how are you working with because obviously the, the kind of stakes are quite high for both of them emotionally. Of uh, what they're kind of going through in the scenes. Do you kind of, how is it rehearsal wise, improvisation? Like, how do you work with your actors? Yeah. So, um, like I mentioned, Nikki, who played Wendy, the lead, she just knew this character already from reading the script. And we talked a lot about um, growing up with a sense of loneliness and isolation and the, this feeling of not being seen. Um, which she identified with having parents who were working all the time, day and night. She was basically like a latchkey kid and kind of would feed herself and um, come home to an empty house a lot. And, um, and I also had very hard working immigrant parents who were, you know, working all the time as well. And so that feeling of not being seen by your own family, by your own loved ones um, really resonated with Nikki. And I think, um, for that reason, she like got the character of Wendy very quickly. And so when we were rehearsing and when we were um, shooting, that was something that we referenced a lot of like, um, you know, who are the people in Wendy's life who are not seeing her right now, who she wants to be seen by. I mean, Wendy is a deeply isolated person who wants friendship, but doesn't even know that she wants friendship. She yeah. thinks that she doesn't want friendship. She thinks that she's yeah. totally fine on her own, but it's clear that she's not um, and that she's experiencing a lot of pain. And so um, it, the film builds to this climactic ending um, or I guess an unexpected ending, um, which is like this outburst basically. And I think what I told Nikki uh, on the day that we shot that was like, this is, the moment where you feel like you haven't been seen by this person who you were hoping was gonna be your friend, the only way she's gonna see you is if you push yourself on her and demand it, you know? Um, total spoiler alert, now you know what happens, but. We can, no, but I, I think the ending that, you know, was, was um, it, 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 got, it got me, uh, it was like a big, frog in my throat just that there's just spoilers you, you'll get a frog in your throat because it really was powerful and, and wonderful and it's it's a great journey to take on with these with these two characters what's it been like i mean obviously we love having your film with us at new filmmakers la what's the reaction been like sharing this film i mean particularly because it's obviously inspired by you know something that was true to you and obviously you felt you know kind of uh, a personal relationship enough to make a film about so so how has the reaction been for you yeah, so we've played in a number of festivals and I think um, we've gotten very lucky to get into some great festivals, you guys included. Um, thank you so much for the support. Everyone who programs it is like, this film is amazing. We love it so much. That's a great and thing, right? I mean, how are people? It's great. And I love that it is resonating with people and that they, they understand what we're trying to do. I think when it plays in theaters, which it's only played in one because so far it's been mostly online, a lot of people are just so taken aback that um, their immediate reaction is like, oh my God, what just happened? Yeah. And um, so a number of people have been like, 
yeah, I like your film. It's really dark. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> all they can think about is just how sad and awful it is. Um, but I think for other people, it's like, you know, they understand why Wendy acts the way she does. And uh, so, yeah, it's been an interesting mix of reactions. Well, there's certain films that still sit with you. And this film still sits about, sits with me like it's real. Like it's very, very, you know, uncomfortably sits with me because, you know, I just, it's hard to just feel that there are so many people that are living amongst us that are kind of going through things and, 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 and being far away from, you know, home and all those different things that, that, that we kind of face and particularly growing up as a human being. I mean, they're both young people trying to make them, you know, make, make the, you know, grow as an adult and understand what they want and what they don't want in life and, and, and the pressures they receive from families and all those different things yeah. that accumulate in your mind. So I thought yeah. you really pinpointed and articulated all those different factors really well. Um, what is next for you? So um, I'm working on a feature script called One Summer on Fire, also set in the Bay Area, also an Asian American story. It's about a 30 something startup founder um, named Liz. And uh, she just like really wants to be the next Mark Zuckerberg, but um, she's not there yet. And when her first startup fails, she ends up moving back in with her mom in Gilroy, which is like a suburb of San Jose. So like um. more Bay Area lore. And while she's there, she falls in love with the blue collar guy next door. Um, and it, she starts reconsidering like, maybe I shouldn't be trying to be Mark Zuckerberg after all. Maybe I don't need that. Um, oh, so wow. yeah. I already can't wait to watch it. I was like, <laughs> uh, can, I, can I see this now, please? Like, I want to see this. This is great. What a great story. I, I, I really do, you know, from all, already what I've seen thus far, I, I, I love your vision and I love the kind of, you know, uh, the, the depth that you take us in into a film as well. Like it's, you, you, you know, even Parachute, like I, as uncomfortable as it is, I would want to watch again because, you know, there's just a lot of nuances and things in there that are just, you know, symbolic to what these girls are going through and, and young people are going through. So I'm so glad you made it. Um, I mean, you know, in your career thus far, um, you know, for other filmmakers out there, um, particularly other filmmakers, um, you know, who are just trying to get their, that get it underway, get themselves moving forward during this time, all the different things that come in your way as a filmmaker. Is there any advice that you could share with our audience? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been, you know, I made, I've made a few films so far and I also recently started programming for festivals. So I'm getting a good sense of like the kinds of work that people are making and yeah. um, just like how fierce the competition is. Um, yeah, right. And I think like my, you know, my best advice is like, keep, keep going. Cause it's going to take a really long time. Um, keep making the stuff that's deeply important to you. Um, and, and don't be swayed by, you know, what other people say is like trending right now or what you think you should be making or what is like good cinema or good filmmaking. I think really like the best thing that you can do for yourself and for your career is to, think deeply about your own personal experience, your own personal vision and make work from that place. Mm -hmm. And um, the more rejection you get, the easier the rejection becomes. I mean, you, yeah, you'll yeah. face a lot of it up front, and then over time you realize like, oh, that rejection doesn't define me. You know, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad filmmaker. It's just that I'm like on my journey. Mm -hmm. So. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really nice that you can sit in the shoes as a programmer. I mean, I program some film festivals too. And, you know, sitting in those shoes, you realize that a lot of it is not personal at all, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it can feel like a personal rejection sometimes. Um, but it's, it's not always the, it's not always the case. It's actually really a difficult job to do because, you know, you have to form a program of films together. So, so at least you can understand both sides. So any film actor out there, if you don't get to film festival, keep trying. It's not personal or I promise, we promise you. Um, um, listen, thank you for bringing Parachute to us. I'm really excited about your next film and uh, thank you for being part of uh, New Filmmakers LA. So thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you, Danny.